Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Name. It's me, Ella, and today we're talking about my fair entries. My county fair is coming up like tomorrow. Technically, it starts tonight. Uh, what is today? August 31st. It starts tonight um, in, the, in the afternoon, but it's just like I think the tractor pulls tonight and a couple other little things like that. But tomorrow morning at between 8 in the morning and 12 in the afternoon um, is the entry time for exhibits. That includes, you know, stuff like I'm doing, needle, um, what do they call it? Heritage skills and 4-H uh, for the kids, baked things, uh, plants, all, paintings, all that kind of stuff is all included into that. So I'll be going in the morning to uh, enter all my stuff. So I wanted to make this video just to show you guys what I'm entering and what categories they're in and stuff. And then, um, I don't know, should make another video tomorrow showing you if I won anything, what I won. <laughs> if you're interested in entering things into your county fair, um, if you're in the United States, I don't know how it goes about other countries. But um, one thing you can try to do if you don't know anything about it is you can look up on Google or on Facebook your county's name. Like my county is White County. So you would type in White County, Tennessee Fair. And that if they have a website or a Facebook page, it'll bring that up. If for some reason your county doesn't have a website or a Facebook page, if it's a smaller county or something, you could try contacting your courthouse and um, someone there will know who to contact in order to get information about the fair. Our fair usually lasts a week, a little over a week actually. It starts on a Friday, like today, and then it ends that next Saturday. And then that sun the second Sunday is when people who entered uh, things would go and pick up their stuff and their checks if they won uh, ribbons and got money. Just a little walk through real fast. Tomorrow morning when we get there, we'll park, <laughs> obviously, uh, and we'll go in. We won't have to pay entrance to enter stuff. Uh, the gate fees, it's free when you're just entering, but later that day when we come back to see who won, we will have to pay the entrance fee. But um, there's a building, ours is set up in a little building uh, right off the midway. It's right beside where all the rides are. So we'll go in there and there's usually a woman in the front of the building at a desk with a computer. And you go up to her and you, um, you know, you give her your information, you say your name and you have to verify your address. Um, just, I guess, so they know that you actually are from the county you're entering in. Uh, and they'll print out the sheet of stickers and they're stickers with barcodes on it and those barcodes are connected to your name. So then when you go around to each of the little tables for different categories like sewing or whatever, you, um, you like if, like a wreath, uh, I have an Easter wreath so I want to enter into the other holiday wreath category. They would get the tags and put one on my wreath and with one of my stickers on it because that connects it to me that, that's saying that that's my wreath and then they give you the other side of the tag with the other sticker on it <laughs> proving that that is indeed your wreath. Um, that's how our fair does it at least and then you keep your little tickets uh, the whole week and then when you go back the next Sunday to pick up your items and your check uh, if you want anything you have to show them that just so that they know that someone's not taking someone else's things. Uh, the categories that I'll be entering into this year is the heritage skills and I think that's split up into it's called crafting, needlework, and sewing or something like that. I can't exactly remember the the main categories but each of those categories have littler categories in it and I'll, I'll read off because I have it listed out. I'll read off the lots and everything just in case anyone's interested. <laughs> Our fair does have a lot of categories in it hundreds of them, all kinds of them. One of these years, maybe next year, I'd like to enter every category that is uh, crochet-ish. Because even if it's a sewing category, they will let you enter crochet things because they're sewn together. They're really lenient at our fair. Um, I really like that. They're all really nice there, and I'm sure they are at most fairs. Jesse is napping, so if he might wake up and pop up somewhere. Uh, or make noise or cry or something and I'll have to go get him. And also their apartment next to us uh, is being renovated so you might hear some weird tool sounds. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and hop into the categories. I got them all listed here on my computer so if I'm looking down that's what I'm looking at. And I've got them all jumbled up right here. So they're not in any order. I'll have to, I'm just going to try to fish the ones off the top all first and then get deeper in there. I think I have 21 or 22 items that I'm entering and they're all done except one. I have one wreath that I'm working on. I'm going to try to finish it today. Uh, if I don't finish it today obviously I won't be able to enter it because I have to go in the morning to um, enter them and it is the fall themed wreath and uh, I will pop up a picture about that later when I'm talking about it uh, to show you what 
the pattern one looks like. Mine will look a lot like that, just different colors. First one on my stack is, it will go under the category crafts, and it is lot number, where did it go? <laughs> 213. That's how many lots they have. We have a lot of lots. <laughs> And it is the category, it's called any other holiday wreath, and then it's not Christmas. It can't be like a Christmas wreath, because there is a Christmas Thanksgiving wreath categories. So I've made this spring wreath, which is a free pattern. It's a free pattern on their website. I think on Ravelry it is a paid for PDF, but you can go through the link and get it for free. Um, it is called Spring Wreath by Maria Bittner, and I'll have it linked below. I did tweak it a little bit. I made the wreath form a little different and I added some eggs that I already had made from another pattern and I only put one flower on it. And the flowers are pinned. This is the wreath. Little Easter bunny eggs and flowers, the daffodils. They're, they're pinned because I'm trying to get them to hold their shape. I'm going to unpin them in the morning before we leave. I just want to make sure that they're not curled up and closed. And yeah, so that's my spring wreath and I just put a little loop of crochet on the back for them to hang it with. Because at our fair, when they display them, they hang, you know, everything is hangable. They hang up. They try to display stuff really well so that people can see it. But yeah, so this is my spring wreath. <laughs> I'm just going to pop that on the rug. All right, the next thing on my stack is another wreath, and it's my snowman wreath. I did get inspiration for this pattern from another pattern, just from looking at the photo of it. But I, I couldn't access that pattern right away. I didn't feel like looking for it, so I just went ahead and made it myself, um, just, you know, off of my head. But it is a snowman uh, wreath. I've showed this in my most recent No Catch Your Name episode. And he has eyeballs now. <laughs> His eyes are a little crooked. I noticed that after I um, sawed them on. And I was like, I don't even care. Because snowmen aren't perfect. They can melt and be lumpy. Who knows. But he's just a white wreath form. And I've made him a little scarf. And kinda, he does have a carrot nose. From the picture I shared the other day, it looked like a circle. Because it was like that. But he does actually have a carrot nose <laughs> and a little top hat with uh, holly berries on it and he has also has a little loop for them to hang him with next category is lot 231 and it's another wreath <laughs> of I think four wreaths all together just one's not done this one is patriotic wreath and this is my flag wreath 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 I feel like I said that a thousand times but uh, it is the American Flag Wreath by Erica Fedor, and it will also be linked below. They'll all be linked below. I finally finished sewing on all the stars the other day, so it's got a good coverage of stars. These are like crocheted um, strips that are uh, ripply, kind of like shells wrapped around it. And then it's also got a little thing on the back to hang it with. Super cute. And then for lot 55 which is part of the sewing category but like I said they will they they have it labeled really weird they basically don't really care about the categories or something I don't know but it's my um, magic heart hat which I did finish I put those little these things on there whatever they're called barbels or whatever and it is the hat crocheted hat category see it's in the sewing category but it's the crochet hat section I don't know they just have it weird this is a free pattern, but I do not suggest this pattern because it's got a lot of mistakes in it. But there are plenty of other Magic Carp hat patterns if you're interested. Just look it up on Ravelry. And lot 230, I'm flopping around, I should have organized it a little better, is Patriotic Decoration. And for it, I'm entering my Heidi Yates flag. This is a garden flag, but I make these and hang them in my house. So, And this is called the um, Snappy Sound Flag by Heidi Yates. Uh, the pattern has like USA written on his beard and I just didn't want to do that. I just wanted his beard normal. <laughs> so let's just say I mean, he's got a little eagle on his head and I put it on a dowel with a striped um, ribbon just to make it pretty so they could hang it up with that. But I think he's adorable. <laughs> I'll definitely be hanging him up next 4th of July, Memorial Day, whenever those American holidays that are all patriotic. I guess I could probably hang them up now since Veterans Day is coming up. Our fair doesn't have categories for like shawls and things, but they do have lot 057, which is other crochet item, and that is any other item that's crocheted <laughs> that is, doesn't have, already have a category. So I, I've chosen to take my Treasure Island shawl by Hannah from the Cozy Cottage Crochet to enter that because I made that late last year. I can't, no, early this year. I think it was early this year, but it's just this little shawl that I made 
with my Gatlinburg yarn. <laughs> um, I'm going to enter it into that category and hopefully it'll place. We shall see. It all depends on if they actually get it up and look at it and not just look at it folded up there on the table. But yes, that is a paid for pattern, but it's totally worth it. And all of Hannah's shawls are awesome and she's coming out with some more. So keep your eyes peeled on those. Lot 210 is fall decoration that isn't a wreath. <laughs> and I made this little hanging scarecrow. And it's called Hanging Scarecrow by uh, Rilla Edwards. And it's a free pattern. You can't really see it unless he's hanging because he's flat. <laughs> but he's just a little scarecrow with a little loop to hang him by. I think he's cute. Uh, the pattern does have hair, and I actually meant to put it on there, and I completely forgot, but I don't think it really needs it. It looks fine without it. He's just cute. This was super quick, too. I only made this in like an hour or so while watching TV. Really cute. Lot 203 is Christmas stocking. This is the same exact stocking I made last year, just it's a different size and different colors. Last year, I did one first place with it, so I'm hoping this year will be another first place winner. But I made this in just two shades of blue and white. This is the Holly Jolly Holiday Stocking by a name I cannot say, but it will be linked below. It's free. This pattern comes with two different sizes. There's this one that's kind of a smaller size, and then the one I made last year is a little bit wider and a smidge longer. You can't see it very well. Oh, there you go. It's a really pretty uh, popcorn stitch. What are those called? <laughs> what is the top of a sock called? Cuff. <laughs> I love this. It's real pretty. I love this pattern. It's kind of, I think it's called the brain waves pattern or something like that. It's just really pretty. For the Christmas ornament category, which is 204, lot 204, I made this one. It's got a tassel on it. This is a um, plastic white glittery bauble, I think they're called. I just got it on clearance one year and then it's crochet thread around it, which is kind of difficult, but I'm sure if you do it a few times, you get used to it. And this was actually in a pattern book that I bought. It's an old book. I don't have it with me. I'll pop up a picture because I do have a picture of it. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's an old Christmas book from like the 70s that I got at the thrift store. I tried to find it on Ravelry, but I couldn't find the pattern or the designer or nothing like that. So I don't think I can share that pattern, but, uh, it's in that book, so maybe if you find that book, you can get it. But yeah, it's really simple. I think it's called the um, sh shell stitch something. <laughs> but it's just really pretty. I thought it was pretty. And uh, this is my first time ever working with crochet thread. Our fair doesn't actually have a category for dish cloths, but they do have um, two dish towel categories. One is for decorative and one is for serviceable. And so I do have a... a um, decorative one and a serviceable one. Okay, for the decorative towel category, I used a Heidi Yates pattern. A lot of these are Heidi Yates patterns. It's a paid for pattern, but it's really good and cute, and I like it. And it's called the hanging, the snowman hanging dish cloth pattern. <laughs> and it's his little hat unbuttons. So you can like hang it over that bar on your stove or like handles on your drawers. And I thought he would be a cute decorative dish towel because this isn't one you would actually want to use. I didn't even make it with cotton. It's made with acrylic, but it's still really cute. I'm hoping that they'd count. <laughs> and then for the serviceable one, I didn't have a dish cloth, um, dish towel, so I did make a dish cloth and I don't know if they'll count it, but maybe they will. And this is the, what is this? This is the Granny RR dish cloth by Julie Fort and it'll be linked below. The pattern I think has like three dish cloths in it. But this is it. I liked it because it was granny and it had this little flower here that would be good for like scrubbing stuff. This is cotton yarn and I will definitely use this after the fair. And then the another one right below it is lot 30. I haven't been saying lot numbers. It doesn't matter though. <laughs> um, it's a placemat. And now I know some people they have to make four placemats for their fair but ours doesn't say that so I just made one. I hope it's just one. Um, so I made the Pico Fan Placemat by Jennifer Edwards. It's kind of hard to hold up because it's real, you know, it's like, this is the cotton yarn, the Yarn Bee, the newer cotton yarn, and it's real, like, drapey. But I think this turned out really pretty. I actually do want to go back and make three more of these so that we can use it on our table when we get one. I think it's really pretty. That's my placemat. There are two toy categories. They have just toy, and then they have toy, comma, stuffed. <laughs> so I'm going to enter two things in that. In the just toy category, I'm going to enter Mrs. Super Snappy. 
Miss Super Snappy, which is a Heidi Yates pattern. Big doll. <laughs> um, she's, I'm going to her into just the toy category. And then the other thing, I don't have it in here because it's in Jesse's room and he's sleeping, is my giant octopus that I made. I'll pop up a picture of him. Um, I think Terry gifted me that pattern um, months ago and I made it for Jesse, but I'm going to enter that into the toys, comma, stuffed. Because <laughs> it's kind of like a big giant stuffed toy. Um, I'm hoping that they'll count that. I didn't know if I should enter that as a toy or as a pillow <laughs> because it's kind of both. But uh, I'm going to enter it as a stuffed toy and hope that it wins. And this this will go into the holiday, Halloween wreath category <laughs> because it's a Halloween wreath. And this is three patterns meshed together. There's, and then that. This pattern is called Candy Clops. Who is that by? I can't remember who that's by that right now. Yes, Julie King. And then the spider is a Sid the Spider by Lucy Coates, who she used to do YouTube, but she's not really done anything lately. And then the wreath and the bat is Sarah Zimmerman, right? It's called the Bat Wreath by Sarah Zimmerman. She also has a cat one too that's really cute. But yeah, I just meshed them together to make it more Halloween-y. And yeah. I did not put a hanger on that. I actually need to do that, so I need to set that aside and do that so that they can hang it up at the fair. Okay, for the category of Christmas decoration, I I had a hard time choosing whether I should enter Santa or the elf, but I was wanting to, I was thinking I'm going to enter Buddy. Me and Jesse named him Buddy the Elf. This is a Mary Smith pattern. It's a paid for a pattern, but it's, I love all her patterns. Her amigurumis are awesome because they're, they're big and I really like giant amigurumis. But I think he's super cute and I think he's totally a ribbon placer. I did actually put a dowel in his head to make it sturdier. I do have a Santa and I didn't do that at the time and his head's a little floppy. But I learned that with bigger amigurumi you definitely need to give them spines so that their heads aren't all floppy. Unless you, of course you want it to be floppy. But yeah, I just love this little elf. I think he's adorable. Actually when I made him I accidentally left a finger off on each hand. He's supposed to have five fingers on each hand and he only has four. And it was so funny because he was part of a crochet along and I was like, does this still count? Because I accidentally left off fingers and she counted it anyways because, I don't know, she's just nice. <laughs> We're almost done. I got a few more. And there's another category that's Halloween decoration. Last year I entered a cute little amigurumi ghost and he won first place. So this year I'm entering this. <laughs> this is another Mary Smith pattern. He's blown out. He is Red Heart Super Saver Glow Worm, so that's why he's so like bright. But he's just a little frog on a pumpkin. He did have a spider hanging from his hat, but Jesse pulled that out last year and I have no idea where it's at. <laughs> but I think he's still super cute and Halloween-y, even without his spider. But this is also a paid for pattern, but again, totally worth it because her patterns are awesome. And then there's a category that is other, what is it, other holiday decoration, not wreath, but decoration. And for it, I'm entering my, another Heidi Yates pattern, my um, Lucky Garden Flag by Heidi Yates. I had this hanging in my house last year, y'all might have seen it. And it's just a St. Patrick's Day themed garden flag. And I thought it was super cute and totally worth entering into the fair. And it's just on a dowel and it's got a crochet chain to hang by. That is a paid for pattern, but like I always say, Heidi Yates and Mary Smith patterns are like my favorites, so definitely buy them. <laughs> All right, and then, okay, we got one, two, three more things to talk about, four more things. Uh, this one is the Thanksgiving decoration. Did I enter something in that last year? I don't think I entered it last year. Yeah, I entered a wreath in the wreath one, but not in the actual Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving category, I made this cute little turkey, and it is called the Thanksgiving Turkey Emigrumi by Kara Guz Gun Gunza. <laughs> it's a free pattern, and it's super duper cute. It's just like this little body and five granny squares that you sew together in a pattern to make his tail feathers. I think he's super cute. In retrospect, I wish I had put something in him to make him stand up better, but hopefully they'll put him up against the wall on the shelves <laughs> to help him stand up. But he's super cute and fast. I made him in like one setting. Scarf pattern. Um, there's a crochet or not a yeah. There's a crochet and a knit scarf category. Uh, so last year I entered another Heidi H. This is a Heidi H pattern and it's paid for. But again, it's awesome, so you should buy it. <laughs> um, last year I entered the one that's just like this, but it was reindeer and Santa's head. It's called a sampler scarf because there's a bunch of different stitches in it. It's like you practice different stitches in it. And this is the snowman one. I made this a while ago, earlier this year. So I don't know if y'all remember it too much. But it's just a bunch of different snowmen. That's the part that would go around your neck, your head. There's another snowman with little overalls. Two little ones in a pom-pom. <laughs> I love this scarf. I gave the the one last year to my mom. She wanted it real bad. The Rudolph, or the 
the reindeer one with Santa, but this one I'm keeping because I love these little snowmen. They're so cute. But last year with the the Rudolph, the reindeer one, I keep saying Rudolph, I won first prize with it, so maybe that's a first prize winner. I don't know. We shall see tomorrow. <laughs> okay, there's two more things. One is the fall themed wreath, which I will pop up a picture right here of what it's gonna look like kinda. Mine will be different colors, obviously, because I don't have the same one that woman did. But um, I can't remember the pattern either. I'll pop it up. It'll pop up somewhere. But it'll also be linked below if you're interested in it. It is a free pattern and it's really quick. I've already got all the leaves made and the acorns. I just have to make the little vine things and then wrap the form and then sew it all together. So I shouldn't be able to finish it tonight unless Jessie has a breakdown. Or I do. And the last one is the elephant in the room. Wonk. Mr. Mr. Should that be a Mr. or Mrs.? We'll say Mr. Mr. Mandala Madness. I got it just draped over there just because I wanted it in the background without holding it up. You guys have already seen it. Um, if you haven't, you can go back to No Kitchen Name number 55, which should be number 54. That's the second time I've done that. I've skipped numbers. <laughs> uh, and see it. And I'm also actually going to be making a video coming out this next week on a review of that pattern. So there'll be more clips of that whole blanket in it and a lot of information that I've gathered about the Mandala Madness and all that stuff. But yeah, that's going to be entered into the category of crocheted afghans and hopefully get best of show i want a best in show ribbon so bad <laughs> but um i'll be happy with any ribbon really because any ribbon makes me happy but um i didn't have time this year to finish a baby blanket i didn't start early enough on my fair projects i'm actually going to be starting some of my next year fair projects in a few weeks i've already got a list started of what i'd like to make for next year um and i want to make the sophie's universe but it's awful, it's kind of on the smaller side, so I may enter that as a baby blanket and then make, find another pattern kind of like the Mandala Madness to make for next year's big afghan, regular size afghan. But I want to use a different color scheme. This is rainbow. It's white, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. <laughs> and I kind of want to use like shades, I think, of purples or blues or blues and greens because I love blue and green together. I don't know. I'll come up with it. <laughs> I got a few a few months to worry about it. It did take me two months to finish that one, but I was going ham on it. So I'd like to not have to work on it constantly for next year. So I'd want to start it sooner so I can just work on it a little bit throughout the month and not have to like go crazy and finish it. But yeah, that is all of my projects for the fair for 2018. I'm super excited about going tomorrow and entering them and I'm even more excited about 4 p.m. because I have to go enter on between 8 and 12 and then I have to wait till 4 p.m. for them to open the doors after judging. So it's gonna be really hard waiting. <laughs> Last year I was really anxious. You could ask Devin if he were here. Um, we actually went twice before they opened, seeing if they were open yet. <laughs> hoping I guess that they'd open sooner but they didn't so this year I'm gonna wait till four and um go check it out and after, when we're at the fair after we go and see if I want anything and I will take clips of that and all that so um you guys will see it when I see it uh we're gonna get some food there because there's a barbecue place that cooks at the fair every year and their food is so good it's called Templeton's and they make this amazing dish and it's french fries with pulled barbecue pork on it with barbecue sauce and nacho cheese on it. Oh, so good. Um, just thinking about it makes me happy. We're gonna do that and we might let Jesse play some of the little games. He's still too small this year to get on any rides except for like the merry-go-round. And I don't really wanna spend a lot of money on um, an armband if he can only ride one ride. So we're probably just gonna let him do like the duck game and maybe throw darts at a balloon or something. And then we'll probably just come home and chill. <laughs> It's gonna be really hard to leave my Mandala Madness at the fair for a whole week and hope that no one messes with it. Actually, the thing I'm most worried about getting stolen is the Magikarp hat because Pokemon Go is so popular around here and there's a lot of teenagers and a lot of teenagers are hoodlums. So I'm, I'm hoping no one stole my hat, <laughs> but it's okay. I can always make another one, I guess, but it will make me sad. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I guess that's everything I have to say about the fair. I'm gonna hop off here and clean up all the stuff before Jesse wakes up. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the fair video, the actual footage of the fair. I'm going to try to take some clips before the fair of uh, entering stuff. Depends on how full it is. Um, last year it was pretty full, so I don't know. I might have Devin film a little bit for me. And then I'm definitely going to film at the fair uh, looking at the stuff. And I'll show you other people's stuff too because if something places higher than me, then you guys can get kind of an idea of what judges are looking for. That's what I did last year. The grand prize winner for blankets last year was a, a sampler blanket 
with a bunch of different stitches and different colored yarns not like a um, striped yarn like like a mandala or something it was where you have to actually cut it sew it in and start a new color that's what won last year so that's what gave me the idea to make a mandala madness this year because it's a ton of different stitches and a ton of different colors so um, I'm hoping that I get at least first but I'm really wanting that purple ribbon <laughs> but yeah I'll see you guys tomorrow at the fair bye